Hey folks, Dylan here from Eat Wild. Now I want to talk a little bit about how I pack my raft for a day going down the river while I'm on the hike. Now we're on a trip, it's a multi-day trip, I think we're doing seven days on the river here. And we've got, um, we're hunting a little bit along the way, we're mostly planning to hunt from our camp. So I wanted to show you how I've organized the boat um, while we're on the river for the day. Um, starting first of all with my kit here on me, of course life jacket, helmet, um, dry suit. On these expedition trips, we want to mineralize our wrist to as close to zero as possible, which is hard to do when you're on a remote wilderness river. Uh, but certainly dry suits, helmets, uh, life jackets help a lot with that. Um, of course, we're hunting, so I'm going to have my binoculars with me. We're constantly stopping on the river, looking up at these beautiful hills around us. Uh, Rangefinder, radio, and in-reach device for communication with my with my hunting partners uh, or home. And then, of course, bear spray. We're in bear country. want to have that with me at all times. So thinking next about the boat. Oh, one more thing. I've moved to, we spent a lot of time walking on these rivers to portage around stuff and be safe. Um, it's important to have good, solid footwear um, for when walking over rocks. I'm using felt soles uh, just to stay stickier on the rocks. They're a bit heavier than I'd like, but they give me a solid foundation for when walking or portaging down river. So that's one thought. Okay, let's talk about the boat next. We're using the Alpaca Forager. This is a bigger boat. We're elk hunting. We're you know optimistic that we're going to have to put you know minimum half an elk in this boat along with all my personal gear and kit. Um, you have the zip here, which is great. Um, gives you access to inside the boat. I put all of my camp gear, it goes inside the boat. That's the stuff I don't need for the day. Uh, on one side is my camp, sleeping bag, thermo rest, tent. Other side is my ration of food for the next seven days uh, on this side. And a few miscellaneous stuff like game bags, that type of thing that I would only, would only need after I've set up camp. So ideally, we're going to end up at camp. We're going to break down the boat and we'll have access to our camp gear. Moving down the boat, obviously, you know, if we see a moose crossing the uh, river or, or a, uh, a, an elk on the river, I want to have access to my firearm. It's strapped in. Everything on this boat is strapped in. You have to expect that the boat might go over. Um, water bottle, uh, throw rope is key. You have a high access point for that. Up here in this bag is basically my hiking boots and my 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 day hiking or my day hunting kit. So it's my day pack inside of there um, with all the things that I would need to go for a hunt. So if I saw an animal on the side of the road, we could run the boat to the shore and I could throw my hiking boots on and run up the hill after it and have everything I need to uh, to take care of business if we do come across an animal. Um, now, high access stuff up here. I've got inside here, the, this is the bow bag. I've got my spotting scope. I've got my first aid kit. I've got my patch kit and I got my snap kit. Um, also my pump to pump up the boat. So this is high access stuff that I need constantly. We're always pumping up the boat as the, as the air temperature changes inside the boat. Of course, we're stopping and looking lots. Um, and of course, any for emergencies and for food, all ready to go there. This one's a little harder to get into, but you can do it. And just make sure everything is strapped on, especially your Eat Wild hat. You don't want to lose that. Um, anyways, that's going to get us down river and it's going to get us to, um, uh, to camp. And then at camp, we have a lot more options. One thing to remember when you're on any of these trips, like the boat is, it's essential that you take care of this boat because it's your way home. And so when you get down to camp, make sure you pack the boat up, put it nice and high so the porcupines and grizzly bears won't get curious and, uh, get mixed up with your boat because it doesn't work out well for the boat. Um, anyways, I hope this is helpful. Um, I'll just show you a quick couple of shots of how, my friend Adam sets up his boat with his bow, which is a little bit more complicated. We'll go to that next. Okay, hey, I'm Adam. I've got my Alpaca Explorer 42 set up for uh, archery elk hunt that we're doing. We're out here for six nights, seven days, and I've got it set up just a little bit differently than maybe a rifle hunter would. Um, I really, really like the alpaca dry bags. They're the exact size of the tubes. They're really long and circular, and they're blue, and you'll see us running them in and out of our boats. So I've got my camp in one and my food in the other. And basically as we eat through the food, I'm balancing out the weight. So it's probably a 20 pound food bag and a 20 pound camp bag roughly. So it's kind of important that you balance the two different uh, tubes so your boat rides really well. And then I've got some other stuff. I don't have, I don't have as big of a boat. So I don't have my 
um, hunting stuff really ready to go. And also bow hunting is not really a uh, super opportunistic way of hunting. It often takes time to stock. So I'm not necessarily going to jump out of the boat and go chase down an animal. If we do, we've got two rifle hunters that are set up to do that. And um, yeah, I've got my bow, which is kind of the most challenging piece of gear to pack in a pack raft. I've got it set up. I, I've taken all the stabilizers off. So I'm trying to compress it as, as much as I can. Um, I've got actually my Crocs underneath the bow, just so it's not rubbing on the actual raft material. And I've got the bow bag used to tension down from four different points. Not putting too much pressure on the quiver, but I think it's a good enough amount to keep it safe. And then I've got some other odd items like trekking poles that have, they have these carbide tips on them. So they're pretty sharp uh, and, a, and a spotting scope uh, tripod that I can pull out and glass if we see a big glassing spot. So I've kind of extended these poles out a little bit so that the carbide tips are not potentially gonna poke my buddy's raft. And they're strapped in. I really, really like these Titan straps. I've used them a lot for bike packing and rafting and all kinds of things. They're super handy. You can roll your raft up and use them to tension them. You can strap stuff on. Big fan of those. So that's tied in with a Titan strap. And then bow bag, um, quick access stuff like a pump, food, spotting scope. I've got a camera in there. This is waterproof. So it's nice that I can get to it, but it's tucked away and out of the way um, when I need to float. And I think that's essentially how I'm doing it. Um, running in a little bit lighter, a little bit tighter, but uh, does the job and, and accomplishes um, what I need with those challenging items like a bow and these hiking poles. And, and um, yeah, keeping it balanced. It's, it's riding really, really well too. I, I would say having this weight on the front and the bow on the front and then me at the back, it's keeping it really, really even. Whereas sometimes if you don't have something on the front and you're sitting in the back, you might want to sit up a little bit higher, which is going to cause probably not as good a maneuverability. And then you're going to kind of, if you get an up, up valley wind, it's going to sort of play in the wind. So this boat's riding really, really nice. Awesome. Thanks, Adam.